Hello everyone, Assalamu Alaikum. Welcome to Salar Khan YouTube channel where today we do some final discussion on the gas insulation. Basically, we wind up the topic. So, what have we seen in gas insulation is, so in the very first video that I started, I uh, uh, talked about a certain number of properties that are the characteristic features for any insulation. For any gas, those properties, it should obey in order to be used as an insulation. Now, uh, uh, the most important thing that I have been missing in all the, the, the series of videos is that the dielectric strength or the insulation properties of a gas insulation are completely recoverable. The insulation properties or the dielectric strength of a gas insulation are completely recoverable. after a breakdown which means what which means that if you if a gas has breakdown has reached the breakdown potential and breakdown has occurred after that still it can be used for insulation purposes why because for instance let's suppose we've got air in between the two electrodes over here let's say two electrodes are placed and breakdown occurs over here so what happens that is for the time being more of the air molecules would take up that space similarly for any other gas more of the molecules would take up a space air molecule gas molecules specify a very large space right so it means that it is not being wasted or you don't have any particular thing that is wasted right it is being taken up by more and more molecules so this is a very important property the insulation properties of the dielectric strength of a gas insulation are completely recoverable after a breakdown after discussing the main characteristics we uh, uh, we, we, we studied a brief mechanism of the breakdown or of the failure of the mechanism in which the major role was of what of the electrons now where do the electrons come from so first of all of course they are present due to nature naturally electrons are present in every sort of a material right and then the external agencies we talked about the terrestrial radiations the environmental radiations that we have so in which we have the visible spectrum the ultraviolet region the 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 infrared region and then the far ultraviolet x-rays and gamma rays we did calculations for the energy where we saw that the visible spectrum wavelength uh, and, and how do they, they produce this ionization so they produce it because they have got photons and that photon has got an energy where E is equal to HC by lambda. H and C are the constants and lambda is the wavelength of that particular radiation so depending on the wavelength we've got energy so depending on this wavelength we did calculations where for visible spectrum we saw that it does not have ample amount of energy to produce ionization whereas if you move to the far infrared uh, to the far ultraviolet region x-rays and gamma rays so they have got the energy to produce ionization similarly for the infrared region we were not uh, afraid of because that, that required a very huge amount of temperature which was not practically possible so what is ionization? So ionization is the production of charged particles, right? We saw and, and the main thing is electron. Then we did calculations to find out the energy of electrons, right? And similarly, we had positive ions. So uh, 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 in ionization, electron is formed and a positive ion is formed. We did calculations to, form, to find the energy of the electron and to find the energy of the positive ion as well. But then there was a a point that the electron will move in the electric field both of them will move in the electric field but when electron reaches the anode it is absorbed why because it is a lighter particle but when the photon reaches the cathode it is not absorbed why because it's a massive particle and the, the speed is also low the speed of the electron is 10 to the power 6 range whereas the speed of the ion is in 10 power 4 range Similarly, the masses. So the elect the photon, uh, the 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 positive ion is not absorbed and it suffers a collision course. And with the and an electron is ejected from the cathode material as well, depending on the work function. So if the energy of the positive ion happens to be greater than uh, twice the work function of the cathode material then an electron is ejected now why twice so because if one electron is ejected that is uh, you know at the same time at the very same time that is absorbed by the positive ion 
so you don't have any free electron but when it's greater than twice the work function so two electrons are emitted so one is absorbed by the positive ion and the other one is allowed to move in the in the in the space right so the current increases right the current increases because of collision ionization and then you have electron multiplication we saw a situation comes a situation comes when this current is is way greater and you, it leads toward instability and finally the avalanche current leads to breakdown of the material and the and the insulator material becomes a conductor fine yes then we talked about electronegativity that when uh, uh, when you have an electronegative gas so it is what it has the affinity to capture electrons so when we introduce an electronegative gas into the chamber or uh, what uh, what do it have it will tend to attract the electrons and the number of electrons would decrease so which means the chances of the collision ionization would reduce and what happens is the breakdown would take place at a higher value a higher electric field would be required to produce breakdown down because the number of charge carriers are reducing fine yes finally we talked about a pressurized gas that is advantage of the pressurized gas is that at high pressure the breakdown voltage increases which means a higher voltage is required to produce breakdown at the same gap for the same gas but at a higher pressure similarly we saw it for the lower pressure as well right so apparently everything depends on the electron so in the high pressure region what happens is that you uh, uh, bring the molecules so close together that the mean free path for the electron reduces and the collision chances reduces and similarly the uh, they do not suffer that scale of uh, uh, of ionization uh, which produce electron multiplication that scale of collision to produce electron multiplication so normally at a pressurized gases the breakdown occur at high value of voltage similarly at low pressure what do you have they are far apart so they go straight without collision the application through which we discussed the whole gas insulation was that of a circuit breaker because when the context of the circuit breaker open we have a breakdown of the channel over there we have an arc accompanied by a very high temperature and a very high current so to, to extinguish that arc we give what we admit uh, pressurized air through a solenoid valve yes yes in the form of an air blast but again instead of air we can use an electronegative gas so of course we would have to pay an extra amount of money but you know that would work because uh, sf6 is the most common gas used because it is an electronegative gas so producing that electronegativity as well as well as hmm, it is a coolant as well it has got cooling properties so it will cool the metal contacts of the circuit breaker also and you know we're talking about the high pressure so the sf6 is present in pressurized form right so if the pressure increases the probability of the breakdown reduces under normal conditions is that clear it is so i believe that is all about that is the summary of what the gas insulation that we have studied till now let us have a number of uh, numerical uh, examples let's say i talk about uh, uh, an, an atom of, of of ionization potential three electron volts an ionization potential of three electron volts oh, and the incident wavelength is what the photon that is incident on it has a wavelength of 100 nanometer right so what do you have is the question is how many electrons would be ejected number one how many electrons would be ejected right so for this first you need to calculate the energy the energy would be what hc upon lambda the value of h is 6.63 into 10 to the power negative 34 and multiplied with what 3 into 10 to the power 8 and divide by 100 nanometer 100 into 10 to the power negative 9 or you could do what you can use the formula i told you is 1 2 4 0 upon lambda where lambda is in nanometers so directly put it over here 1 2 4 0 upon 100 this gives you a 12.4 electron volt this is the energy that you have got 
so the number of electrons would be how much the total energy 12.4 divided by the ionization potential which is 3 so this would be 4 point something that something is let's say 3 so you have got 4 electrons we don't have a 0.3 electron no rules of rounding up over here just take the value now how much energy would this uh, electron take how much energy would this electron take so this could be a part number two of the question is the energy of the electron energy taken by the electron would be the difference of the energy and what is that difference of the energy so the total energy that you have which is equal to hc upon lambda that you have this much amount of energy minus the energy that you have taken in you have utilized in freeing the electrons so you have n number of electrons and multiplied with the ionization potential of each so which means that the change of energy that you have is what you had a total of energy 12.4 minus you uh, freed four electrons each requiring a three or electron volt so which means the difference of energy that you have is a 0.4 electron volt 0.4 electron volt right yes now this is the total energy that remains with you but each electron energy would be how much each electron would take a share of this energy so this would be delta e divided by the number of electrons so this would be 0.4 divided by 4 so each electron has got 0.1 electron volt energy and similarly you can find out the speed of each electron so do i have space over here just let me check oh yes i can just write this final line so the kinetic energy is half mv squared u of electron squared generally we write it so u of electron would be two times the kinetic energy the kinetic energy is this one point one but you need to convert it to joule so from electron volt to joule i will multiply it by 1.6 10 power negative 19 divided by the mass of electron which is 9.1 10 power negative 31 kg so the speed of the electron would come out to be how much this would be 1.9 into 10 to the power 5 meter per second 1.9 into 10 to the power 5 meter per second now this is the initial velocity with which this electron has been ionized with which it has been removed from its parent atom the final velocity the field will give will give it okay right yes now the next question is if i talk about an ion if i talk about an ion so uh question number two is if i'm talking about a positive ion over here so let's like, suppose i have an a2041 a2041 this is an atom so you know how to calculate the mass of the atom let's suppose this has been uh, has been ionized to form a1941 so how do you find it so how do you find the mass of this ion the mass of the ion let's say i take a plus sign over here would be the mass of the electrons which are how much 19 into 9.1 into 10 to the power negative 31 and then plus mass of the nucleus which contains 41 number of neutrons plus protons so 41 multiply 1.6 into 10 to the power negative 27 which is the ma mass of proton and neutron is almost the same so this gives me the mass of the positive ion which is how much 6.8 10 power minus 26 kg now what do you have let's say the, the the speed of the ion is how much the speed of the ion i would represent as a v plus is basically in the 10 to the power 4 meter per second roughly so you can calculate the energy of the positive ion right so the energy of the positive ion you can calculate and that would be a half and m is uh, 6.8 into 10 to the power negative 26 and 10 to the power eight right so how much this energy comes out to be this is 3.4 in 10 power minus 18 so this would be joules similarly you can convert it into electron volts which would be by dividing this thing by a factor of 1.6 into 10 to the power negative 19 and this gives you what 21.2 electron volt 21.2 electron volt now let's say you have a material of a work function which is 6 
so the cathode material has a work function of 6 electron volts so how much electrons would be removed so number of electrons in the similar fashion comes out to be what let's suppose energy was part number first uh, right or let's say this was mass uh, number second point number one was about mass now number three you are given the work function so number of electrons would be 21.2 upon six so this comes out to be 3.53 so you don't have anything like 0.53 so three electrons are ejected now again you can find the energy of the electrons so three electrons will be would be ejected but what do you have is out of this one would be absorbed directly by the positive ion and you would have two remaining in the free two would be in the free state in the chamber or between the electrodes so now you can find out the energy of the electron would be what energy of electron would be the difference of energy and the difference of energy is what that would be what do i have is half mv squared yes uh, you have this energy you find it the energy of the ion energy of the ion which was half mv squared yes minus n times the number of electrons emitted by phi k right so what do you have you had a total of 21.2 minus how many electrons you got now you got three electrons emitted because this energy you have utilized you have utilized this three electron volts six three six are 18 so the change of energy that remains is how much that is 3.2 electron volt 3.2 electron volt so now part number five you can see is the number of electrons emitted are are two right you have got two because one has got absorbed so each electron energy each electron energy would be then this remaining energy 3.2 divided by two electron volt so this would be about 1.6 electron volt 1.6 electron volt and you can convert it to joule and similarly you can find out the speed with which they are present so two times this energy converting it into joules and dividing by the mass would give you the what would give you the speed with which they have been uh, ejected and that is 7.5 into 10 to the power 5 meter per second 7.5 into 10 to the power 5 meter per second okay now let me have a little bit of discussion from the book chapter number three it is example 3.1 states what calculate the arc current in a gas having a first ionization coefficient of 400 meter inverse so it is giving you an ionization coefficient is 400 meter inverse uh, enclosed in a protector gas discharge tube with electrode separation of 5 centimeter so the distance d is 5 centimeter uh, the conduction current in the gas under normal working condition is 0 0.01 milliampere. So this is basically that I naught which is 0 0.01 milliampere. So you know the formula for the arc current I is equal to I naught exponential of alpha D put down the values 0 0.01 into 10 power negative 3 exponential of 400 multiply 0 0.05 the arc current comes out to be what 4.85 kilo amperes 4.85 kilo amperes right yes another example let's say from the book is 3.2 calculate the ionization coefficient of a gas so alpha is unknown enclosed in a gas discharge tube with electron separation of 10 centimeter so d is given to be 10 centimeter the conduction the current in the gas under normal working condition is 0 0.01 milliampere i naught is 0 0.01 milliampere and the maximum breakdown current is 10 kilo ampere i is equal to 10 kilo ampere so can you not do it by yourself you can so you have the same formula i is equal to i naught exponential of alpha d so you require alpha i divide this by i naught now i take the natural log of both sides i upon i naught and this would be equal to alpha and you have a 1 over d as well so alpha is equal to 1 over 0 0.01 yes 
Yes, 10 centimeter would be 0 0.01, right? Yeah, 0 0.1, sorry. 10 would be 0 0.1, yes. And then you have natural log of the current is 10 kilo amperes. And over here you have a 0 0.01 milliampere. And this would give you the alpha value, which is the first ionization coefficient, which means what? Which means that these are the number of electrons produced by per electron per unit path length. And this is 207.23 per meter. 207.23 per meter. Do I have any other example? 3.3 and 3.4. So these are the same to just we saw, but let's say, let's say we do it, let's say we do it. What does it state? 3.3 states what? The work function of cesium is 2.14 electron volts. Work function is 2.14 electron volt. Determine the maximum kinetic energy and the speed of the electron ejected from the surface. So again, the same kinetic energy is required and the speed is required uh, if if you have a wavelength of 546 nanometer so can you not do it by yourself can you not do it by yourself you can i've already solved two examples let's say this is question number one for the homework you have to write the answer to this in the comment section give it one and then write the answer similarly question number two is also your homework which is example number 3.4 it states what the work function of a material is 3.17 electron volts work function is 3.17 electron volt determine the maximum kinetic energy and speed of the electron ejected if a positive ion having energy of 5.72 electron volt is uh, you know incident over it so the kinetic energy of the electron is again unknown and the speed of the electron is again unknown and the kinetic energy of the ion is given to you and that is 5.72 electron volt so have a look i've solved this question over here as well you have the kinetic energy you've got the work function you can find the number of electrons change of energy number of electrons emitted one would be absorbed ejected minus one would be emitted and then you can find the speed and of course on this feed you can find out the kinetic energy you know the mass of the electron so question number one depends on the photon energy 1240 upon lambda. I've got this procedure over here. Question number two is for the positive ion. I've got this procedure over here. The answers to these two I needed where? I needed in the comment section. So please write question number one and answer and then question number two and its answer. That is it for that is it for me about what? About the gas insulation still if you have any question any queries the comment section is open for you guys i will see you in the next video with the topic of liquid dielectrics till then take care of yourselves everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye